What up guys? I'm back here behind the truck right now, the M35 uh, Project Snowball. Got the bed off, standing here looking at the parking brake assembly and thinking back and I remembered that uh, I had made a video on the parking brake assembly and all the stuff on it and how to adjust it a long time ago and the video disappeared and that's one I haven't been able to recover. So um, I'm just going to take a few minutes to kind of show you a little bit about them again. Um, so we're back behind the cab bed off this is the easiest way i've ever been able to point things out and explain it actually because uh, this way you've got pretty much total access to it so i guess let's start at the beginning beginning you've got your brake handle now there's two styles of handle one is like a squeeze handle and that's people call it the whale tail and uh, then you have the new style, or the adjustable handle, which is this kind. And you have an adjustment here that you adjust by turning this knob. Now, when you make your park brake adjustments, like if you put a new set of shoes on, you want to turn this, I think it's counterclockwise, I don't know. Whichever way it is that this pin moves all the way back to the back of the slot here and moves down. Because this is a threaded rod in here, and this is actually a, a nut. So you want to adjust that all the way off. Then you come back here and you follow your cable, and um, this is one of your other adjustments. Okay, you see I've got mine adjusted almost all the way up. Every truck is different, every setup is different, some of these brackets are bent, some of them are built to a different spec. So there's no, um, there's no way I can tell you, you know, put the nut on and turn it X amount of turns in and you'll be right. It's, it doesn't work that way. Uh, you can follow the adjustment procedures in the TM, but then again, even if you follow that, you go from one truck to another and do the same thing, and you'll have a totally different result. So, um, on the brake itself, you've got two adjustments. You've got the nut here, which you see I put some um, heat shrink on there to keep it from backing off. It is a lock nut, um, but my advice to you is when you get a new nut then that's called the acorn nut and uh you see why it's kind of like acorn shaped my advice is when you get that take it and grind some of the locking serrations off that way you can back it off because once you go on there you can't back it off at all um it actually ends up snapping the shaft off the part brake cable so if you ever have to back it off at all you have to replace the part brake cable unless you grind that shit off. I did grind some of mine off, which is why that's on there. And I tried using a lock nut on it once to hold it down, and it just, the lock nut wobbled off and fell away. So, I mean, this works for now. Yeah, hell, it's been working for years now. Um, you have that adjustment, and you have this nut and bolt adjustment. And what this does is it holds um, the outer shoe the distance it needs to be either close to or away from the park brake drum and you see mine actually needs a bit of adjustment now because it's off and the inner shoe is rubbing so this needs to go down more um, or I mean I guess I could back that off um, so let me explain how this works when you're adjusting this the first thing you do is adjust the outer shoe you want to make sure that you've got all three springs. That's very important. If you don't have all three springs, your shoes will burn themselves up in no time. It's not a question of if. It is going to happen. You need this spring, this spring, and there's one down here right there called the mustache spring. Um, those are the most common ones to break, and when that happens, the, the shoes kind of bounce around and rattle. So if you're if you're hearing a rattling uh, underneath the truck somewhere when you're moving especially at low speeds that's probably your problem is that spring has snapped uh, let's see so the first thing you do is adjust this to where it's not touching the drum and neither is the inner shoe okay once you get this where you want it and actually you see I don't have a lot more room to go down um, because the end of that bolt has been cut off, I think. So I might need to get a longer bolt. Um, but you want to adjust this to get your, your space here where it just barely doesn't rub when you turn the drum. 
I mean, you see, I've got I've got quite a bit of space there, too much, and uh, the inner shoe is touching. So you adjust that first, and then you adjust the inner shoe spacing by adjusting this here, which when you turn it, it's cantilevered, so if you pull this arm back this way, the inner shoe will go in before this outer shoe goes down. That's it's, uh, how it works. So, uh, other than that, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It, it, it is important to note, though, that uh, if you get both of your shoes adjusted where they're not touching the drum, but you're still hearing some rattling and that spring is down there is not broken and all your other springs are present. Um, it's more common than you think that this drum is warped and that can happen if the transfer case had been changed out and it was dropped or it had been uh, hit when it was in transit on the pallet, you know, at any time in the past 30 years that it was being stored, or um, if somebody ever had the park brake adjusted up really tight and it was set and they went to take off from a stop and forgot to undo the brake, that can bend the drum, warp the drum. Um, the way you check that is I unbolt the shaft, put the transfer case in neutral, turn the park brake off, and just rotate the drum by hand and see if and when it hits either the inner or the outer shoe. You'll be able to see it bigger than shit because they're never warped just a little. Okay, they're always warped. If they're warped, they're warped a lot. Um, those drums can be had brand new. They're still available. Uh, they're not that expensive. I think the shipping generally costs more than the drum itself does. So uh, the rust in them, don't worry about it. It's 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 not a big deal if you get a used one or if yours has some rust on it all it's supposed to do is hold clamping force on it when the truck stopped this is not meant to stop the truck in case of a brake failure it usually won't do it uh, unless you can get the truck really slowed down with the gears and you have time to do all that before hitting something this ain't gonna stop you so keep your brake system in good shape um, what else is there to tell you about this? Oh, yeah, I mean, the grease points, those are kind of self-explanatory. On the inside of this shoe, on the on that end of it, you can't see it unless you take the assembly off. There's a C-clip. That C-clip, for some reason, has a habit of coming off and disappearing. And then that shoe will ride forward and it'll rub on the inside face in there of the drum constantly. Um, that can make a lot of noise too. It doesn't squeal. Uh, I've heard it make different sounds. So, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're getting sounds from underneath the truck, look at the park brake assembly and you, you should be able to tell from, at least from what you've learned from this video, what's going on with it. Those C-clips you can get at a hardware store or, or E-clips, not C-clips. Uh, Yeah. And you can um, space the whole assembly out and see like where it rides on the drum on the main mount bolt down there if you shim it. So yours will probably have some shims on it to begin with if you look at it. And um, <coughs> you also want to make, <coughs> make sure this bracket isn't bent or distorted because that will make a, diff a big difference in where this bolt puts the shoe as well. So uh, make sure your bolts aren't loose, the mounting bolts and uh keep it greased but don't over grease it remember this is brake components that's what this inner shield is for is to keep grease from the u-joint from slinging it into the inside of the drum so also make sure you have that shield equipped um you know some people might think well i don't need that i'll just throw it away but uh you do and to change that drum you've got to pull the whole park brake assembly off pull the drive shaft off pull the yoke off and then the drum will come off because it's on the back side of the yoke. So if you have to change the drum, it's fun. Um, yeah. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you found this useful. If you got any questions about it, anything more specific that I haven't addressed here, uh, go ahead and post it in the comments below. I will answer your question. doesn't matter if it's been a day or a year. Um, I will get to you on it and get you taken care of. So. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you later.